Welcome to Conversations with Women Living Well After 50. I'm Sue Long Carrick and it's lovely to have you join me for another conversation. I've often written about the transition of life as we move from career to retirement and how many of us uh, find that transition difficult. I know I did myself. My guests today decided to delve a little bit deeper and they actually interviewed and collated the responses from many women across the world to find out their thoughts about this transition in life. I'm delighted to introduce my guests today, Leslie Inman and Roxanne Jones, the founders of Retirement Voices, a community of women helping women navigate through retirement. Leslie is a savvy marketing and sales professional who has held senior management positions in corporate, higher education, non-profit sectors, and also has been a solopreneur. She's a serial retiree, as she's retired three times, the last being in 2017. And so she has a deep understanding of the joys and challenges of post-work life. Roxanne Jones is an award-winning freelance writer specialising in health and medicine. She also created the popular Boomer High Q blog, uh, which she ran for three years. She's currently downshifting into retirement, a process that's given her a keen grasp of the emotional impact of transition as she navigates her way through it. Today, Roxanne and Leslie join me to discuss learning to say no an important lesson for women in retirement. So let's go and join the conversation. Well, welcome ladies, welcome Leslie and welcome Roxanne. I'm just so excited to have you join me today for conversations with women living well after 50. We're delighted to be here from the USA. Yes, thanks very much for having us, Sue. Yes, yes, no, and, and what I love is that we've got the technology and, and that's a positive from COVID-19, isn't it? We've all turned to, you know, the technology to be able to communicate face-to-face, -face, even if it's not physically. And uh, we can be talking to each other on the other side of the world. So, you know, it's, it's really, that's a positive for me that's come out of the last six months because there haven't been too many positives. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> But uh, look, I want to start today, um, you ladies, uh, I mentioned in the uh, intro that both of you have been working on a project and I actually um, found out about it when you first started. I received an email asking if I would spread the word and help you um, uh, get the project out there because what you were doing was asking women about their thoughts on transitioning and life after work. So I want you to tell the listeners a little bit about your book that's coming out soon, I think, Retirement Voices, Women Reveal What Life After Work Is Really Like. And um, I wonder if you can tell us how it came about and um, what was involved. So Sure. Well, this is Leslie, so I'll get us started. And the idea behind this project, Sue, actually started when I retired three years ago, and I was paying a lot of attention to the people around me who had already retired. And I noticed that different people retire differently. And, and what I mean by that is some people move into retirement really easily. Um, most of us struggle with it for a while before we figure out what we want to do and be. And some, I know some people, they never figure it out and they're unhappy. And so I wanted to learn more about that and understand it. And Roxanne and I have been friends for a number of years. I knew she was thinking about her own retirement. So I approached her to see if she wanted to work on this project with me. And we didn't really at that point know what it was going to be about. But we did decide that we'd um, explore the social and emotional aspects of retirement because the financial planning aspects, there's so much that's been written about that already. We felt that that was covered. Um, but at that point, we really weren't thinking about a book yet. Right. We had some initial conversations with retired women friends. We figured we'd start there. And 
in the course of those conversations, we identified some common themes, particularly around identity, relationships, and as Leslie alluded to, how some women struggled to find a sense of purpose after they left the working world because that so many of them felt adrift mm. um, after they had left their careers. And in the course of these conversations, it, almost every single one of the women we spoke with asked if we were writing a book because it was something they wished they'd had when they retired. Um, just to get this kind of feedback from other women who'd been through the transition. So we decided we would. Mm. Now, I think that's great. And Le uh, Leslie mentioned about, you know, there are so many books about uh, financial, um, you know, retiring and, and what you need from the financial point of view, but there's not much about the how you feel. I know, I, I know that I retired, uh, I retired early. Uh, the opportunity came along and I just thought, okay, I'll retire. My husband had retired before me because he's a little bit older than I am. And we thought, okay, we'll spend some time together. But after six months, I just, as um, Roxanne said, the exact words, I felt adrift. I had mm -hmm. no purpose. I didn't know what I was going to do. And there was no real... And every and people that I spoke to felt the same way, but no one was coming up with any answers, and um, and no one was doing what you actually did, which is, in hindsight, probably quite obvious. Get opinions from people, put them together, get thoughts, get them all together, and produce something that you know people can actually read and feel. Oh well, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one that thinks right. this way. Yeah, we, we really want this book to be a way for women to learn about other women's retirement experiences. Mm. And to do that, what, the way we got started, Sue, is we built our own website. It's retirementvoices.com. And we created a questionnaire and put that up on the website and invited women in any way we could think to reach out to women, invited them to answer our questionnaire. And when we were done with the submission period, we had almost 300 women who responded including you and thank yes, you for that yep, yep, I was gonna say, I did. <laughs> yes you did and we thank you for that and we had women from all over the united states and from 10 other countries there, there were a wow. few from australia and we even had two women who were cruising on their own respective sailboats who were wow. answering online so you know this book is based on those responses and it tells us what retirement's really like for women emotionally mm. and socially mm. so you mentioned that we filled out a questionnaire and yes i did and, and i rushed to do it because i was thinking oh this should have been done ages ago so <laughs> I, I was really supportive of what you were doing and thought it was a great idea um so it probably made the women think filling out the questionnaires, you know, reflect on themselves. But what did you learn from women who, when you were looking through their answers and and was there a theme going through there or, or what were some learnings that you took away from the initial? One of the, the, the overarching um, takeaways is that there are some really big emotional issues that come up for many of us when we retire. Um, we've defined ourselves by our careers for so long that figuring out who we are and finding that sense of purpose in retirement can have a real impact on our equilibrium mm. for a while. Mm. Some of us find being at home with a spouse full time is a major adjustment. Um, many of us are surprised when our work friendships fall away. You know, we think that these folks we've been spending every day with around the proverbial water cooler, that those friendships will continue, but they, most times they simply don't mm -hmm. because you, you don't have the same things in common anymore. They're busy, you've got time, and it just doesn't, those connections don't, uh, don't last. Um, some of us expected to spend a lot of time with our adult children, uh, only to discover that their lives are already pretty full. Mm -hmm. um, so that doesn't always work out the way, the way women thought. And for women who are forced to retire sooner than they planned, uh, which is happening a lot lately with the pandemic, mm -hmm. 
um, it can have us questioning our value and worth. Um, yeah, look, I, I agree with that, Leslie. Yeah, one of the, the biggest things for um, people during retirement, we found one of the biggest issues is for us to decide how much we want to structure our days or not structure our days um, and how we want to spend our time now that we're no longer working because all of a sudden we have a lot more hours available. And a lot of these women told us that they were really surprised by how busy they are now. They've got so many things going on. Um, but the other kind of counterpoint to that is many of us told them that they were really overcommitted because they weren't able to learn how to say no. Oh, yes, that's the age old dilemma, isn't it? For yes, women? it is. Mm, mm. And uh, why do you think we have that problem? Why is it such a big issue for women in general that, you know, I look, I'm still a work in progress with it. I'm learning to be better. <laughs> But I think as a wife and a mother and a friend, you and also depends on your personality too. I'm a, I'm sure. sort of a, a fairly giving person. I want to solve everybody's problems. I want to be there. So I tend to say yes more than no. But I'm also recognising now that there are times when that's not serving me well and I have to, you know, take a step back and look after myself. So... Why do you think it's such an issue for women? Well, I think in general, we just have a difficult time saying no, partly because we don't want to hurt other people's feelings and we're afraid if we say no, it'll feel like we're rejecting them. And partly because we think if we say no, they may not like us anymore. It may reflect on us. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. And some other reasons we have trouble saying no are that we don't want to disappoint the other person um, and it's just easier to be agreeable and as girls unfortunately you know most of us are raised to be pleasers yeah and our culture encourages women to be people pleasers so it's very hard to go against that grain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, the uh, because we can't say no why does that become more of a problem when we retire, do you think? Well, I think as Leslie uh, mentioned, it's because we can easily get overcommitted and we end up sacrificing ourselves at, mm. at, at this time in our life. Mm. Yeah, and, I, and what, what happens a lot, Sue, I think especially in early in the retirement is that you know, our friends and family look at us and they say, oh, you know, they're, you're not busy. Uh, they say we're not working and maybe we haven't figured out what we want to do with our time. Um, so they naturally start to ask us to do things. So they ask us to join their book club or their investment club or to go on their volunteer activities with them. Um, things happen like our kids ask us to babysit their our grandkids because we're, of course, we're not busy. And and what happens is we say yes to all of it because it all sounds interesting and like things we want to do. Yes, and perhaps we want to uh, fill in our time because we're concerned that we've got, you know, days stretching ahead of us with nothing, in, you know, to fill them. But sorry, Roxanne, you were going to say something. Oh, then. Just, you know, because we're so good at saying yes and the people around us may still be busy working, they also start asking us for favors or to run errands for them. You know, it's like, can you hang out at my house and wait for the cable guy to show up? Or, you know, would you be willing to take my dog to the vet? He needs his shots and I've got a really big meeting I can't, uh, can't get away from. And so, um, you know, we, again, it's hard to say no because the perception and sometimes the reality is we don't have anything else to do. Mm. But I and, think that's doing ourselves a disservice. I think we've got to respect ourselves. We, we are individuals. And I think that's where the self-care, the self-respect comes in uh, but, and the self-confidence. And I think that uh, when you have retired, as you said, Roxanne, you know, your friendship circle changes and you right. may have to develop new cir uh, circle of friends or new activities. And that can be quite daunting. And I think that people, they don't mean to take advantage of it, but I think they sort of forget that you're an individual. You might just be mum or the friend or whatever. 
and they just don't mean it, I don't think, but they just tend to, you know, take you for granted and we just accept that instead of having that self-confidence in ourselves to say, well, I'm me and I'm going, and, and I have a life as well. Yeah, and then what happens, Sue, is we end up getting overbooked and overcommitted and, and ultimately we start feeling resentful because all of a sudden we're looking at our retirement life and saying, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. I'm busy babysitting, running around. I'm not doing the things I thought I would do. And, and all of a sudden it's kind of like, where do I go now? What do mm. I do? Mm. Mm. And talking about feeling busy, and gosh, I'm guilty of this too, that need to feel busy or having structure in our day, but going to the nth degree. I mean, I actually have just um, booked in with my husband to have a week <laughs> off and not doing anything because I get so caught up in uh, what things that I want to do and I'm loving it, but perhaps our relationship's suffering a little bit because I'm motoring along doing what I want to do. But there's, we do need to have that balance, don't we? So um, sure. how do we overcome that, do you think, that need to feel busy? Well, I think, you know, we, we have that need, I think, because we're used to it. With our working lives, we've got lots of structure, right? And, and we're used to having, you know, a busy calendar, daily obligations, and, and we're really comfortable with that. Mm. Mm. Conversely, it feels uncomfortable when we don't have it. Um, if our time is structured and we're busy, it often makes us feel productive, like we're accomplishing things. You know, we have a, a to-do list that we can tick things off and we have a purpose. And it can also make us feel important and valued if we have lots to do and accomplish. And without that structure, we can often feel lost um, or at loose ends. And that just doesn't feel comfortable. No, I've got a friend at the moment who's struggling a little bit. She's retired early and uh, she's taken that sort of honeymoon period you know where mm -hmm. if you like to call it that where you think oh I haven't got to get up early I haven't got to do this I haven't got to do that and of course COVID came along which means we couldn't do anything uh, mm -hmm. but uh, now she's starting to feel unsettled because she's not really sure what she wants to do and some days she's feel, she feels really comfortable not doing anything but I think the other thing is that we are all different. So what might be right for one person isn't right for someone else. And she's starting to put pressure on herself to think, oh, I should be doing this or I should be doing that because other people are, when really she's quite happy and contented at the moment. So I think the other problem we face is how do we find that balance between feeling bored feeling that sort of itch to do something and going the other way where you just book yourself out for 24 seven almost just to fill your time. Well, I think a big part of it comes back to learning to say no um, without guilt and without feeling defensive. Mm. Um, you have the right to spend your time the way you want, especially at this stage of our lives. You know, mm. retirement is, uh, it's, it's a time when you should be free to do whatever you choose to do. And we need to remember that no is a complete sentence. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have to justify or explain our choices. If, if we want to veg out and stare out the window for a couple of hours, we should be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. And the other, Roxanne talked about, we have to learn to say no, but I think another reason, another way we find balance is, we have to become clear about what our reasons are to say yes to things. And a number of our women respondents told us that they really had to work on that, that they really had to get clear on what their priorities were because otherwise, how can you evaluate requests that come into you if you don't know how to be clear about what you wanna do? And an interesting thing for me, Sue, is a number of them talked about creating a personal mission statement. So it was all about, this is who I am, this is what my purpose is. And I think if you're clear about that, it can really help guide your decisions about how you want to spend your time. So if you know, you know, for me, 
one of my important volunteering pieces is as a hospice volunteer. And I'm very clear that that's something that I will always say yes to. And if other things conflict with that, I will say no to those. But that's part of my personal mission statement is to serve other people in that way. And mm -hmm. I think if we can all do that, take some time and think about who am I now? Who do I want to be in retirement? And then match those opportunities that come up in front of us against that. Then it, I think that gives us kind of a roadmap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, businesses have uh, mission statements, don't they? And vision sure. statements. So uh, why don't we? Because uh, it does uh, help bring a bit of clarity, doesn't it? To uh, it does. what's important to you. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Roxanne? Or? Well, I think it, the reason it's so important to set these boundaries, if you will, in retirement is that for most of our lives, we've been focused on other people. You know, we've been meeting the demands of an employer, or if we've run our own business, you know, living up to the expectations of our customers, raising a family, perhaps caregiving for an elderly parent. So retirement is the chapter of our lives when we can finally focus on ourselves without these external demands. A number of our respondents referred to this as having me time. Mm. And, you know, let's face it, this is the final chapter of our lives. And as the poet Mary Oliver says, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? You know, retirement is the time to make ourselves a priority and to spend time on the activities that enrich and fulfill us. Um, mm. You know, if if not now, when? Mm. That's right, and and it's it's not easy to do. But I think that um, you probably need to have like a little mini retreat on your own, <laughs> just a personal retreat where you take yourself out of life for a while and just really try to become a bit more self-aware and I know people journal there's lots of ways we can sort of get in touch with our feelings and also what we want in life uh, but then of course it's acting upon it isn't it so mm -hmm. yeah uh, you and know you've you got know, to walk we, the talk right and what you're touching on Sue is something that we've blogged about and cover in our book too which is the difference between doing and being and I think in our work life, especially if we're raising a family, maintaining a household, we're busy doing. And that's part of what we're talking about here is how do you say no to some of those things? I think in retirement, it gives us a chance. I love your idea of a personal retreat, a little mm. planning session with yourself, right? Yes, yes. It gives you a chance to kind of sit down and spend some time being, just getting back in touch with maybe parts of yourself that you've lost because you've been so busy working that you've lost some of your hobbies or lost some of the interests that you have. And so I think for most women, having that time to just spend on who do I want to be now rather than what do I want to do now might really help with this, with this whole discussion. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, so, with the topics that you've covered in this book, um, what are some of the main ones that you'd like to just touch on today briefly? Well, sure. Um, well, we do spend one chapter on this topic, the topic of time, how to structure it, how yeah. not to structure it, and what all of these women have come up with in terms of their answer to that question. Um, but we start the book off with uh, our respondents defining retirement because it means very different things to different people. And also they talk about what their feelings are about using the word retired to, to apply to themselves because some people like that and some people hate it. It's mm. a very interesting variation of responses we got. Um, once we've kind of got that basics about the definitions and feelings of retirement, we cover all sorts of topics, Sue, that we've mentioned a little bit about already, like uh, our identity and what happens to us once we no longer have a, a working, t a job title. What does that do for our self-esteem? Mm. Uh, we talk about our, our health and how retirement impacts our health. And we talk about our relationships. Um, we also have a chapter that's kind of fun for us, which is what all these women found to be 
easy about retirement, difficult about retirement, and what surprised them the most. Mm -hmm. And there's some really interesting stories in that in that section. Um, and then lastly, we're closing with their advice. Uh, these women are giving kind of their insights. They're talking about the lessons they've learned that they want to share with other women. So we think that this book, Sue, should appeal to women who haven't retired yet, obviously women who are starting to think about retirement, this hopefully will give them some topics to consider that they may not have thought about. But we also think it'll appeal to uh, women who have already retired, who either want to learn from their peers or maybe are struggling with something and want to get some more insight from other people. Mm, yes, definitely, definitely. So when will the book be available? Well, we don't have a definite date yet. I, oh, I wish you're, we teasing, did, but... you're teasing us then. <laughs> we are teasing. <laughs> but I suppose, uh, just to interrupt there, you, you do have a website and a blog. So, um, yes. um, you know, you do put up some, um, you write about topics that will probably be covered in the book. But, um, Absolutely. But, yes, getting back to that, when are you hoping? Because it would be a very big uh, task to actually undertake even to get the information and then write the book and then I suppose you'd have to find a publisher and you know well we have we've Roxanne and I have spent many hours at her house before the pandemic sorting through 300 responses to 13 questions so you can imagine the paper the strips that we have state you know taped up on walls everywhere that we're going through and we've decided that we want to go the traditional publishing route and at least to start, we might consider self-publishing down the road, but we really would prefer a traditional publisher. And to do that, we have to get an agent. So yeah. right now we're in the process of querying agents. We prepared all the materials that they need and we're looking for representation at this point. Right. And as you mentioned, Sue, you know, your listeners don't have to wait until our book is published to get some good information about the emotional impact of retirement and how to deal with it. We have launched a blog. It comes out every other week. And we cover just the, the gamut of retirement-related topics for women. We have interviews with retirement coaches, psychologists, and other experts, stories about individual women who've made the transition and share what they've learned. We explore topics like the psychological impact of being forced to retire or how to make new social connections outside the workplace, something we alluded to earlier, mm -hmm. or how to answer the what do you do question that, that seems to crop up when you no long, and when you no longer have a job title. You know, mm -hmm. some people are, are women are like deers in the in the headlight um, when they're asked that question. And yeah. others are very comfortable with with saying um, who they are, what they do at this stage of life. Mm -hmm. So we hope your mm -hmm. listeners will check it out at retirementvoices.com. Yes, and uh, I will be putting all the links to uh, your website and social media into the uh, the show notes and also on the blog. Uh, I always, um, when we publish, I always publish the podcast and, and put your bios and so forth in there as well with all the links. Great. So we'll definitely be spreading the message because I think that it's such a an important um, book and I hope that it doesn't take too long to be published because uh, it will be of great value as you said not just to women who are looking towards retirement but even people like my friend who's been retired for 18 months and is still sort of struggling I think it's right. just and what I love is women are so um, generous with their thoughts and and their experiences aren't they uh, they just want to support each other. And uh, that's what I love about it all. And that's important too, Sue, because we see retirement voices as being more than just a book. Mm -hmm. Roxanne and my vision for this is that we're building a community of yeah. women, helping women to get to and through retirement. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing it as many ways as we can right now before the book's out. We're we have our blog, as we mentioned, um, we're doing, we have social media channels. So we're on Facebook and Twitter. And then we're doing podcasts like yours, which we're really appreciative of and any other kind of speaking engagements. So it's really about more than just a book. It's about women helping women. Mm. And we sure hope that your, your listeners will join us. 
Well, I'm sure they will. And uh, I mean, your philosophies really align with mine as well. I just want women to embrace this time of life and, and to really get to know who they are and become their own best friend, really, and to find that self-confidence to just go for it. But um, we're going to be closing soon, but I would like to ask you both a question that I ask all of my guests. Uh, so I might start with you, Leslie. Um, what does being a woman living well after 50 mean to you? Okay, I'm taking a minute to think about this. That's okay. <laughs> I think for me, what, what hits me when you say that is that she's true to herself, that, that she has confidence in, in who she is, uh, that she has gained enough experience and uh, comfort within herself that she can be whoever she is. And, and I will relate that back to retirement. One of the things that Roxanne and I are learning from all these women is that there's no one right way, there's no wrong way that, that retirement uh, is deeply personal. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about a woman living well, I think that that's what it's about, being, being true to yourself and being confident in doing that. Oh, that's perfect. And what about you, Roxanne? You've had a little bit longer to think about the answer. <laughs> yeah, so your right. answer should be better. <laughs> Not much. No, that was, that was perfect. No, the, the first thing that came to mind for me, and I think this is, it's an evolution for most women, is suddenly you get to an age where you're comfortable inside your own skin. And to me, that's the epitome of living well. It's, as Leslie said, you're true to yourself because you know who you are. Mm. And you don't fear other people's judgment. Um, you, you are confident in, in who you are, what you want, how you choose to spend your time. And retirement is, is an opportunity to, I think, to put that all together and, and yeah. live your very best life. Yes. Yeah. Perfectly said. And I mean, I say this at the end of every podcast, but I ask that question each time and I love the different responses and that's what I love about the podcast because I learn so much from my guests and everyone has such a different interpretation of that question and it's it's really wonderful so um so thank you for that ladies and well, Sue may I I would like to ask you what does it mean to you well for me a woman living well is I think someone who, as you say, feels comfortable with who they are, but someone who is open, open to new experiences, new opportunities, because, well, for me, my basis is health and wellness. Um, and I just uh, studied and got my group fitness instructor course uh, this year. I'm 63. And despite being told I was too old to do it. I still did it. Um, so I think for me, being a woman living well is just not restricting yourself, being open to opportunities in life and, and grabbing them when they come along, but being also aware of the little things in life, taking that time out to be appreciative of what you have and to just embrace, embrace life, living well, living a healthy life um but to me living well is so much more than that it's all the experiences that we we can um achieve and follow and just remembering that we only have one opportunity this is it right. so if we don't take it now it won't you know it may not happen so for me living well is all the things that my guests have said and and more so just embracing life and uh, making the most of every day which i know sounds a bit cliche but sometimes we brush that off and we don't actually stop to reflect about that and i think when you do um, it just makes you a complete person lovely so that's Terrific. my interpretation <laughs> wonderful 
So anyway, thank you so much, ladies, for joining me. And to the listeners, if you would like to know more about the book or anything to do with retirement for women, uh, please uh, click through to connect with uh, Leslie and Roxanne. They're just lovely ladies doing a wonderful job and getting a great message out there for us. As I said, there will be the notes uh, in, the, in the show notes. There will be all the links. And uh, perhaps you might like to let them know your thoughts on um, how you view retirement and the transition or what experiences you've had. And if you've enjoyed this episode of Conversations with Women Living Well After 50, please um, share it with a friend who, who may find value and I know will find value in this topic. And uh, also leave me a like and a comment and a review so that I can keep bringing you guests uh, each week to help us all live well. And until next time, remember to embrace life and to live life every day. Thanks for joining me, ladies. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, then. Bye for now. <laughs>